All right. So I got my foot ascender there. The knee ascender, I want it like, well, it's a, it's a crawl. It's really a chest ascender. But I like it to be as close to my knee as possible. Since I like to use it in conjunction with my redirect, so I minimize the amount of equipment I'm holding or carrying throughout the tree. This one's a little lower than I like. Um, I've made some of my own and are working on ones that would set it a little bit higher. But I haven't noticed that there's a big difference in efficiency other than if I really take a big step with my right foot, my um, foot ascender will come in contact with that. All right, so I got them both attached there, and I'm on a 10. I pull this as tight as I can get it initially, um, and then I'm gonna sit back into it. What happened there? Um, I can get it too tight, but oftentimes if I just do it real snug right away, it seems to be in the proper places as I, as I go up. So the efficiency is in coming in. Um, in holding myself upright. If I can ascend right against the tree, I can almost do it hands free. And it's just simple steps. I start with really small steps when I go to take off. And then as I get into my ascent, if this was a really long ascent, that's when I'm gonna open them up. And like, if you can see here what I was talking about earlier, is if I keep real close, this ascender is gonna be contacting my thighs. So I open it up a little bit. And you can really see that when I'm going and pretending to spike the tree almost, because then I keep my hips real open and the knees out. And that way that ascender is never catching on me, and I get the full stride each time. Um, one thing I did forget to mention yesterday, and someone brought it to my attention, was that with like the rope runner and such, is if you get too close to your tie-in, that you contact the, the trunk, that can prevent that device from um, engaging right away. Or if you've got rope against the backside, so you wanna create a little bit of separation when setting into the rope runner or something like that to make sure it's engaging before you just sit into it. Can you show us a simple redirect and just a rope and a ring? Rope and a ring? With just the ring or the ring and the sling? Uh, with just the ring. With just the ring tie-in point and the redirect. I mean, like, you could definitely play with this probably to get it to do it. You, like, put it through and then maybe tie a stopper knot around that afterwards? I'm not sure if they know what you're talking about. Pass it through the ring around the limb again and then tie a stopper knot around that, the whole system. Like, terminate yourself right around there so you'd have to crawl back up anyways. You mean, like, sort of like this? Yeah, like, almost like a... You know what? I've never thought about that. Yeah. I guess that would allow you to pre-tension it. Yeah. Like, because I can do that right here. You kind of wiggle kind of it. tension it and then height. lock it off. And then I would still put a carabiner. Or some sort of backup. On yeah. that as a backup. Correct. Yeah. I've never tried that before. Okay. I'd have to play with it before I say, yeah, that's definitely a good thing. Something I was, I was messing with but before I just. Yeah, as you just did that, I mean, I can see how I can tension it. And it might not be like a, a true share, but it's certainly going to take some tension out of that where it's not just completely slack. And I it's mean, less gear intensive. It over. And then I'm going to disconnect my system pass that through. And then reattach it back to myself. <coughs> and again, this is one where I'm gonna already pre-pull the loop to wherever I think the, la the lowest point is where I'm gonna go. Because once you load that, it's gonna be much harder. I have successfully, when I misjudged, or I'm like, I got down there and then I see one more piece of dead wood, where you know, you go down, it's like, I gotta get to that last limb. Yeah, that's that loops at the last limb, but I also have to get out that last limb, so I didn't quite pull enough. I was being a little lazy. Um, you, you can, but oftentimes I'll have to almost unweight it to be able to okay. do that. So yeah, and then you can set up in it. I thought I'd properly tensioned it off. Well, tension. But there was a little bit of sit back the as it sat thing. into that. And that was the load sharing. Yep. That's one of the reasons I kind of like it is that it does share those loads. Yeah, so it can. adjusted itself once I sat into it. So I did 
is that typically you got to take off. your system off. There is a way to do it without, um, but I don't find it that reliable. Um, I'll, I'll show what I'm talking about. Right, I see. So you would. That's what I was wondering is how are you going to get your rope wrench and everything through there? But. Right. Yeah. So if I was to lanyard in now, you could try to pull these ones and pull enough of a bite. But you see how that's not very far open? I'm really concerned my system's going to get caught in that bite. Because so that's what every. Bring it up to you. Yeah, I could try to pull it all the way down. Now this is using a lot of rope, so I got to make sure I have enough rope yeah, in that. We can get off enough. But there we go. I can pass it through, and there I didn't have to take my system off. So if it's a shorter distance, and that's going to make more sense than pulling your system off, um, that's great. Though if it's a short distance, most likely I'm taking the little bit of climbing it takes to get back up and removing it that way. But end of the day, you're really tired and you want to, I don't have to go six feet. That's good in my mind. And it gives you a little break. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, certainly can. Well, I'll show you what the concern is. It's easier to show it and then tell you after. All right, so I'm using this three to one technique. Keeping this with me as I run out. Now when I'm coming back in, see how the rope runs through this and is pressed right against the spine of the rope runner? So there's concern if you keep tension under here and go to sit back that it can prevent the prevent it from engaging. If you see there, the spring's pushing it up, but it's not necessarily engaged. So if I was to sit back with some tension on it, especially if I'm like, where, I, where I've run into this is where I'm at the base of the tree. And now not only do I have contact there, but I'm really close to it. And maybe just the slightest bit of friction here is gonna prevent that from engaging. So that's where I'm gonna create separation for me and the tree as I ease into it to make sure it's setting properly. My tie-in point is slipping. But, uh, so yeah, that is a definite concern with the rope going against the spine because that can prevent that from, from, I mean, you can see it right there with the friction against the back there. This isn't going up at all. So that's the concern with the three to one with the rope runner. You're not gonna get that with the rope wrench. Um, but the rope runner specifically, absolutely. You're sitting right under it to set yourself so you're pulled upright, but that's not the way I sit in the tree. Most of the time I'm spending my time out of limb. So I actually want this position to feel that my legs are being loaded at the same time as my hips. Yeah, so in a plane out from it, not directly under. I don't want to be held straight upright. In fact, if I let my legs off the ground here, I'm sitting back just a little bit. But that's the angle that I want to be at. Brand new rope and an old rope runner, not matching very well. Um, but that's why when I'm out at an angle like this, I can feel my legs being loaded about the same way that my hips are being loaded. And that's what I'm looking to adjust. So we've got multiple adjustment points in that. This one here can pull this higher or in tighter to you. The legs can move it one way or another as well. Um, you got adjustment on the bridge. Like, the, the great thing about this is that it's such an adjustable harness for each individual. But when I set up my saddle, um, it is that I'm set up away from the tree at an angle where everything's feeling like it's loading properly. That's what I look for. It just takes a lot like some time just to play with it. Yep, just yep. I'll out. just set a rope up and I'll play with it for like a good hour. And then I'll move around in the tree or on the ground a little bit, come back, sit, how did it feel? Uh, anytime I put on a harness, I'm going to do twists like this. See how it's pinching me. You know, see what it's doing to my body. Because that this is a not an uncommon work position for me. You know, so I want to make sure this is a comfortable position as well. So I, yeah, I spend, when I first get a harness or something like that, I spend a decent amount of time, like a good hour or two, just on the ground, adjusting things, sitting into it. And honestly, when you get new gear, you want to play with it. <laughs> and that's my play time with my new, my new equipment. Yeah, the, things are going to move a little bit. And like in the past, I've put like half hitches so that they don't move on the straps themselves. 
once I broke the saddle into a point, there's like a natural spot where it kind of goes. So like this is this saddle I've got to loosen and tighten every time, but it's at the point now where you can see it even just looking there that I can hit that and it's just automatic. Like just the length that I go every time is the same. You can kind of feel it when you get there and it's just always at the same spot. And now that it's been like that, I don't have a problem with it moving.